in spite of your weakness. Love Jesus in spite of your weakness. When Peter said, Lord, you know. You know everything. You know that I am weak. You know that I have denied you. You know that I have not lived up to your calling. But then, my answer is, I still love you. Never be afraid of loving Jesus in spite of our weakness. Sometimes, we are afraid to approach the confessional. And that is a sign that we are afraid of loving Jesus. That we make big of our weakness, not the mercy of God. Every time you and I are afraid of the confessional, every time you and I feel shy about the confessional, every time you and I think, I commit the same mistake again and again, why go and make confession? We are...
Jesus. You have once again called us around you. Lord, we want to spend this time with you. Bless us so that this time that we spend with you may deepen our faith and love for you. May this time that we spend with you shed light on the darkness of our life. Let this time that we spend with you be an answer to most of our questions. Let this time that we spend with you give us clarity in those areas of our life where we stand confused. Let this time that we spend with you give us direction in life. Dear Jesus, where we shall go, you have the words of eternal life. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. My dear brothers and sisters, and my dear children in Christ, we are once again in the presence of the risen Lord. We are on the threshold of the great feast of the Pentecost of our Lord. The Pentecost of our Lord, the Holy Spirit. And perhaps this time that we spend with Jesus, the one who promised the paraclete, the one who promised, saying, I will not leave you orphan, but the Spirit will lead you. Perhaps this time that we spend with Jesus is a wonderful preparation for the great feast of the day of Pentecost. Keeping these things in mind, when we meditate on the gospel of the day and the gospel is the Lord, the risen Lord meeting his disciples once again. Everyone is there. Peter, the one who denied the master. Peter, the one who said, I do not know him, is also there. He has already regretted for it. He has wept bitterly for that sin. But till now, Peter has not spoken to the master. In that small group, every time when Jesus asked something, Peter was the first one to answer. And now, that relationship with Jesus is disturbed. He is back with the apostles. He is praying. But then when the master comes, that cordiality, that warmth that Peter had with Jesus is missing. Perhaps Peter must have been in a corner, not willing or unable to face Jesus. Otherwise, in that group, whenever a question is asked, whenever something happens, he is the first one to answer. He is the first one to confront the Lord. Ask something. But today, the Lord is asking Peter. Today, the Lord is asking Peter, after this denial, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Though unexpected by Peter and the other apostles, perhaps this reveals something very magnificent, something very great, not only about the love of Jesus, but also the love that Peter had for Jesus. Very often we meditate on the love of Christ, 
even after the denial the lord accepted peter forgave him fine we all know that love of jesus is wonderful so deep we we cannot just overcome it so high we cannot reach it and we sing that god's love is so wonderful oh wonderful the love of god definitely god's love is really wonderful and jesus is the proof of that love jesus is the proof of the tremendous love of god but today let us meditate on the love of peter for jesus not the love of christ we have meditated very often on the love of god drawn inspiration from that seen how the love of god has inspired us forgiven us led us supported us strengthened us each one of us each one of us we have a story to say about god's love about god's forgiveness each one of us if a chance is given to us each one of us will, will definitely preach on the love of god all of us have experienced but today we will meditate something on the love of peter for jesus when peter said lord i love you peter do you love me in other words jesus was asking peter peter has your preference changed has your preference changed now because this is the peter who told christ in the gospel of john in the same gospel chapter 6 when all the others left jesus jesus asked his disciples will you also go away from me as i told you every time jesus asked something it was peter who would answer when jesus was walking on the peat on the water it was peter who said lord if it is you command that i to i to might walk every time lord we left everything and followed you what we will get it is not good for you lord cross is not for you every time it is peter who spoke but after the denial that warmth is missing and the lord wants to bring back that warmth that cordiality that old peter would just connected to would, would just connect get connected to jesus with, within no time and when jesus asked this question will you also go away from me it was peter who spoke up and said lord what did he say lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life wonderful words in our vernaculars we have got beautiful and wonderful hymns written using these phrase lord to whom shall we go you have the words of eternal life and peter must live those words now and in other words when peter said lord i love you in other words peter was telling jesus lord even after my denial where shall i go even after my denial where shall i go i have no substitute for you i must have denied you out of fear i must have gone away from you but still to whom shall i go i have no substitute for you it's only jesus in my life and that love the preference of peter will never change whether it is denial or fear or anything and the love of peter is telling us have no substitute for jesus in spite of our weakness in spite of our unfaithfulness at times have no substitute for jesus and peter had no substitute he did not go anywhere else even after the denial he was with the 11 all the others must have looked down upon him peter till then was a leader now must have put his head down have denied the master peter till now who would have led the group must have sat at the end 
but this answer of peter will reinstate his place among the apostles will reinstate his place peter you can never be at the back you are chosen to be a leader chosen to be a leader pillar of the church and what makes peter that pillar is unwavering love that means i have no substitute for you lord i must have denied you gone away from you but then i have nobody else i have no substitute i have no substitute and today the love of peter is teaching us when you love jesus have no substitute in our practical life in our practical journey at times when we go through the ups and downs of life how many of our other friends maybe from other faith must have told us you go here you go there you will find answers if at all if we had gone that means we have a substitute for jesus we have a substitute for jesus if i have gone searching others if i go there my problems will be solved if i do this maybe what i am facing will be okay if that has happened then today peter is challenging our love peter is challenging our love he says i had no substitute for jesus i had no substitute for jesus even after the denial i was back weeping feeling sorry that i denied my master but then still i can say lord to whom shall i go you have the words of eternal life those words of peter will never change and secondly what we learn from the love of peter he says love jesus in spite of your weakness in spite of your weakness love jesus in spite of your weakness when peter said lord you know you know everything you know that i am weak you know that i have denied you you know that i have not lived up to your calling but then my answer is i still love you never be afraid of loving jesus in spite of our weakness sometimes we are afraid to approach the confessional and that is a sign that we are afraid of loving jesus that we make big of our weakness not the mercy of god every time you and i are afraid of the confessional every time you and i feel shy about the confessional every time you and i think i commit the same mistake again and again why go and make confession we are not valuing god's love we are not loving the way we should love jesus and peter says never be afraid of your weakness in spite of your weakness love jesus and the lord knows as st paul says all of us he doesn't make any difference he doesn't make any difference he says all of us have sinned and fallen short of the glory of god none of us can claim to be worthy of his love and the lord knows that the lord knows and today perhaps these two points for our meditation that we have no substitute for jesus whatever we may do whatever may happen in our life that we have no substitute for the lord and secondly never be afraid of loving jesus in spite of your weakness and one of the ways to express our love for jesus is to meet him at the confessional and to tell him i'm sorry lord i've hurt you i still love you you know everything confession is a time for you and for me to tell jesus lord you know 
everything. Confession is an opportunity for us to tell Jesus, Lord, you know everything. You know all that has gone wrong in my life. You know everything. But I do not want to stop there. I still love you. Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Peter did not just say, you know everything and stop. He said, you know everything. You also know that I love you. And confession is the time to tell Jesus that we still love the Lord in spite of our weakness. In spite of our weakness, we still celebrate God's mercy. And all of us have fallen short of that glory of God. And you know what? The Lord is waiting for an opportunity to reinstate. And after that, Peter was not at the back anymore. Look at the words of Jesus. Once again, he is telling in front of all the other apostles, Peter, feed my lamp. Look after. I am going now, Peter. My chair is empty. You sit there. That is the place given for Peter. I am going to the Father. And you know, Peter, you will be on my chair. You will be the vicar of Christ. That is how the Pope is addressed even today. Every Pope, the title for Pope is vicar of Christ. Someone who represents Jesus to the world. That is Pope. And the grace and blessing for Peter was that. For that love. For having no substitute for Jesus. For loving Jesus in spite of all his weakness. The reward is, Peter, you will be my representative. And Peter becomes the vicar of Christ. And Peter, perhaps who must have stood at the end, in the group of the apostles before this incident, now takes not the first row, not the first row, but the place of Jesus himself. And that is how Jesus blesses us. He is not in the first place. If you think that Peter is in the first place, no. He takes the place of Christ. He becomes the vicar of Christ. Perhaps during this adoration, in a very special way, pray for our Pope as well. Let us pray for him. As he is the vicar of Christ, in everything that he does, in everything that he does, in everything that he plans for the church, may he represent Jesus to us. And may the love of Peter inspire all of us today. Let us continue to adore Jesus with the hymn.
to worship Thee. Let us silently look at Jesus. And tell the Lord, Lord, I still love you. Let us have the faith in Jesus that will enable us to tell Jesus, Lord, I have no substitute for you. To whom shall we go? To whom shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. Let us continue to pray for all the sick members of our parish community. Every sick person who visits our church and prays for the healing touch of Jesus. We thank Jesus for the healing, for his mercy to some of our parishioners who were admitted. We continue to pray for our family, for everyone in our family. Let us once again place before the High Priest, our Pope, the Vicar of Christ. Let us pray for ourselves. At times, we have left Jesus and gone away, perhaps looked for solutions elsewhere, thought that our problems would be solved by others. We ask for the forgiveness of the Lord. Let us spend a few moments in silence in the presence of the Lord, asking Jesus to bless all of us so that we may celebrate the descent of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost, the birth of the church in a worthy manner. Let us now ask the Lord to bless all of us. Let us prepare ourselves for the benediction. Sacramento. Salus honor vetus 
let us pray. O God, when this wonderful sacrament is left as a memorial of thy passion, grant us, we beseech thee, so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood, that we may ever experience within us the fruits of thy redemption, who livest and reignest world without end. Yeah.